4.6, we're going to talk about solar radiation and how it impacts the seasons. You want to be able to explain how the sun's energy affects the Earth's surface. All right, for starters, the incoming solar radiation is called insulation. Um, not to be confused with insulation in the walls, but insulation. As the Earth's main source of energy and is dependent on the season and the latitude. The season is going to um, affect the direction of the tilt. So our axis is on a tilt. And in different seasons, the different hemispheres are going to be tilted towards the, the sun. And that's going to affect how direct the sunlight is that it receives. And we already talked about this, um, but just as a reminder, for the equator is getting more direct sunlight, and so it has a smaller surface area and that that sun is on, versus the poles, they're, because they're more spread out, there's more surface area, and that um, it only receives indirect sunlight. And that's why it's a lot colder at the poles. All right, this is a little bit of a weird graph, so we'll just um, gonna unpack it the best that I can. On the x-axis, we have latitude. So this means the zero degrees, that is the equator, and then the southern hemisphere is down here, and it's kind of weird. I don't really like how they put this graph, but it was one of the more simple ones I could find. And the northern hemisphere is up here. So the, the north pole is over here on the right, and the south pole is over here on the left. And then the red line shows how much sunlight, or how much insulation is being received at that latitude on June 21st, and how much it's receiving on December 21st, which is to us as the winter solstice. So what this means is on December 21st, the Southern Hemisphere, that's when it receives the most direct sunlight. But then over here in the Northern Hemisphere, that's when it's receiving the least amount, the, like the least direct sunlight. And we see the opposite with on June 21st, the opposite, you know, end of the spectrum, we have the least direct sunlight in the southern hemisphere and the most direct sunlight in the northern hemisphere. In the equator, it's, it's all kind of about the same. And then this shows just the annual average of the amount of sunlight received at that location. So what we can then infer from this is that at, in the southern hemisphere on, on winter, or on the winter solstice, that's when they are pointed directly at the sun, and that's when they're going to get the most direct sunlight, and that's when they're, they're going to be the warmest. But then, on the opposite end, when it's June, middle of June, now they're pointed, the southern hemisphere is pointed away from the sunlight, and that's when they're receiving the least direct sunlight. And so that's why the seasons are flipped. And here, um, so let's say we're about like 30, um, our our side of the globe is pointed towards the sun during the the June months, the summer months, and so that's when we're receiving the most direct sunlight. But then when it's cold, in the summer twenty first, that's when we're pointed away from the hemisphere or away from the the sun and getting the least direct sunlight, and that's why it's cold. Whew, it's a lot, but we'll go over it again. Um, so we already talked about this: the angle of the sun's rays determine the intensity of solar radiation. We already talked about the shape of the Earth, the latitude that is directly horizontal to the solar radiation receives most intensity. Um, we've already kind of talked about this too. The solar radiation per unit area is received at the equator, is um, the highest at the equator and lowest at the poles. This just kind of puts a little more math to it. The concept is still the same. This seems a bit repetitive. All right, I also talked about this. Uh, the most radiation is received during the location's longest summer day and the least on the shortest winter day. All right, so let's actually put this into a picture. In the northern hemisphere, um, you'll notice that our orbit is mostly, perspective is still not that great, but our orbit is actually mostly circular. It is, in a, um, it is elliptical, but not by that much. Um, it's not enough to change the amount of t like the amount of heat received. And in fact, we're actually closer to the sun during January than we are in June. So that's just it's not it. 
but what it is is the tilt of the earth on its axis so during the warmer months we're pointed towards the sun so that's when we're getting the most direct heat the most direct sunlight and that's when we're we're heating up more versus in the the colder months that's when we're pointed away from the earth and so we're getting more indirect sunlight so again this is if you're shining your flashlight directly on your desk and this is if you've tilted the flashlight to let that light spread out and we see the exact th opposite thing happen in the southern hemisphere i wish i could have found the same picture but yeah whatever in the summer it's actually in december it's really weird for us to think about that we could be experiencing snow and they're like oh my gosh it's so hot outside or when it's christmas there they they don't have a white christmas that's entirely us that's our concept they have a hot sweaty gross christmas because that's when they have summer and they have winter in the june so we're thinking like oh beach day they're like uh no let's let's stay inside and have some hot cocoa thank you very much last thing i want to talk about and it's kind of an obvious one um, but the direct relationship between daylight length and sunlight intensity. A direct relationship means as one increases, the other increases as well. So this means the longer the day, the more intense the sunlight. I've changed my mind. I don't want to talk about this graph. But it's just showing you the, the hours of daylight and like over the, over the year. Um, so for example, we want to know that on December 21st, North Pole has 24 hours of dark and the South Pole has 24 hours of light. And that again has to do with the tilt. The axis is tilted so that the Southern Hemisphere is pointed directly at the sun. So it's getting the most direct sunlight. And then down here, because they're getting the most of that, they have the most daylight. And so they have the longest day. And that is when it is the warmest. Versus here, that is when it is the coldest. That being said, it's still pretty cold on the poles. But again, relative to the rest of the year, it's the warmest and coldest time for them, respectively. All right, now in summary, explain how the sun's energy affects the Earth's surface.